I've had this stuff in the past. I've served it up with mash and it's really good. I've also served it up with rice and it was really good. So I got to thinking, I wonder if I can turn this into a curry. So that's what I'm gonna try and do today. So inside this can, it's minced beef with onions in a rich beef gravy. It's beef 36% and then beef stock, 25%. Now I normally put a stock cube in my Vindaloo's, so I won't put the stock cube in the base mix, because it's in here. We'll chuck it on top. Right, let's get cracking. Then add a large knob of butter. Don't be shy. Turn the heat to medium, melt the butter. Now add a truckload of garlic, and I mean a truckload. I've got a whole, bowl here. And then allow that to fry in the butter for about a minute. You don't even want it to go brown. So it's like that, so I turn the heat right down again. And I add the spices. So I've got no fresh ginger, so about this much powdered ginger, about that much. And then the same with cumin. Same with coriander. About the same with turmeric. It's a bit easy with that stuff, about there. And you put as many crushed chili or chili powder action in as you want to make it hot. Me, I do like it to have a good kick. So, well, a few more than that. Get all in there. Might put some cayenne, cayenne in later. A little bit of black pepper. About that much. And this is what I really like using. Tandoori masala. You get a good wad in there, about this much. I also put a squirt of tomato puree in there. At this point, stir it all in. And then I turn the heat up a little bit more and allow that to fry down for about a minute. The spices are nice and aromatic, so now I add the boiling water, about this much. At this point, I chuck my meat in, whether that be chicken or prawns or anything. But as you know today, we're gonna to add that can of minced beef and onion. Stir that in. I forgot to say that when I chop my garlic, I put a big pinch of salt on it because it stops it flying everywhere. So if you don't put salt on your garlic when you're chopping it, this is the time to put some in. And now a little bit of lemon. You can use half a fresh lemon. I don't have a fresh lemon at the moment, but lemon juice I found is just as good. A bit good. I think it's three decent squirts. You can always add more after it's finished cooking. Then I heat it up and I allow it to simmer. So this is what it looks like after about 10 minutes. But I'd like it to reduce down a lot more than this. So I'm reckoning, because I haven't done this before, I reckon it might even take an hour to reduce down to the consistency that I'm liking. Another thing about these curries is, if you let them go cold and then reheat them, they always taste better. So this is what it looks like after an extra 40 minutes of simmering. So as you can see, we've got some nice color going on on the top and if we stir it, we can start to see the meat now. And all that wonderful garlic as well. Mm. So it's like a beef, onion and garlic vindaloo. Scrape all that goodness off the sides, back into the sauce. Okay, I'm gonna give it another 20 minutes, I reckon. So this is it after one hour and two minutes of simmering. And it's about the right consistency for me now. Because there's your meat and garlic. I do like a bit of uh, this butter 
oily stuff as well. I do like a bit of, bit of juice in my curries. Okay, let's get some into a bowl and see what it's like. It's looking pretty good to me. Okay, let's give it a taste. What I forgot to mention at the end was I put a bit more lemon in it after it's finished cooking. A little squirt like that. Give it a stir in. Smells nice and chilly -y, I gotta say. Big spoonful. Right, here we go. Mmm. Oh wow. Do you know what? That's actually quite effective. I didn't think it would be using a can of minced beef and onion, but that kind of canned taste that you get with minced beef and onion is very, very sublime now. The dominant flavors are the, or obviously all the spices and that garlic, but it's not massively garlicky, don't worry. It just really adds to the overall flavor. Oh, I'm gonna have to have another go at this. Mm. Yeah, it's warming, it's soothing. This kind of medium thick consistency is just right for me as well. I'll tell you what else you can do to these things. <laughs> no, I reckon, I reckon some, someone's gonna have to go at me about this. <laughs> but if you, if you don't like that full punch of a vindaloo, you can actually shove a little bit of single cream in it. Mm. It's best to do it when it's cold, I find, and then heat it up again, but shall I show you what this does to the color and the texture of one of these things? You just need a little bit. And so we end up with that. Just a slightly creamier version of a vindaloo. Now, the reason I showed you that is because when I've served my vindaloo up to other people, some of them do prefer a little bit of cream in there. Now, do you know what? I can't remember what it's like. So we'll try it. Oh, it's tremendous. <laughs> I can see why they like it that way now. Wow. So it does take away a, just a little bit of punch but not much, you can still get all that chili in there. But it does, it has like a creamy consistency now. Really good. Now this would be splendid with some rice. Most definitely, or a naan bread, chapati, any of the above. I haven't got any of that, but I do have some of those crumpets left. So I just wondered what a bit of a curry on crumpet would be like. Mmm. Really good. Really good. It's not as good as an arm bread or a chapati, but you know, if you haven't got those kind of breads in, these will do. Mmm. Mmm. Those crumpets are coming in handy for quite a few things, aren't they? That's amazing, is that? Making a decent tasting vindaloo out of a can of minced beef and onion, a prince's can at that. And I, I've got to say, yep, <laughs> I'm going to keep the cream in it. This crumb is ever so handy for mopping this stuff up as well because it absorbs the curry. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's dead good, that crumpet, actually. It kind of gets a bit moreish. Mmm. Especially the um, edge, where it's kind of a little bit crispy. That tastes phenomenal. Oh, there we go. That's pretty successful, <laughs> in my opinion. And it was so successful, you know, if I, if I haven't got any fresh meat, or I can't afford any fresh meat, or I can't be bothered getting any, I would definitely use a can of this stuff again. Yeah. Wholly satisfied to last bite. Hmm. Oh yeah, lovely. 
Now, I am going to wash that down very shortly, but I'd just like you to know that I think that this Tesco finest Jersey whole milk is wonderful. Seriously, though, yeah. I'd say it's as good as that Graham's milk that you can get as well. I know it's a bit expensive, but you know what? You know, I'm going to get four, maybe, lattes out of that. And they do taste tremendous. So I'll just have less, but a more quality version. <laughs> Want to buy this stuff again? I think when I bought that, that was about a quid from somewhere. Because although it's not out of date, it has started to show signs of uh, decay on the metal. <laughs> Still, a fun experiment all the same. Anyway, thanks for coming. Till next time. Okay, so first of all, ah, uh, heat on. Ah, uh, I'm just gonna add water. No, that's wrong. Now I turn the heat, then I turn the heat up. Oh. What I forgot to do at the end was add a bit more lemon. I always find the. Now the reason I showed you that is because when I serve, now the reason I've, sh <laughs>